I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, the way that you dress. It's VGC, the video game podcast with me, Jordan Midler, and Chris Scullion. This week, Xbox shutters several studios, and in the second half of the show, we'll be joined by Chris Dring to talk all about it. But first, how are we doing, folks? Chris, how are you? Doing good. What was the, what was the reference there? Was that a Taylor Swift one, or was that something else? No, it, so... I've slightly rang a bell, and I'm not sure why. Have you seen this Kendrick Lamar and Drake I've beef? I've heard about is it. Is it part of that? I lost, I lost track after after the first two songs came out. Everyone, everyone yeah. on Twitter was just talking about the Kendrick and, and Drake and and all the kind of oh he said this he said that and I said I've not even heard the songs yet I've not got a lyric sheet anywhere and then when just more and more songs appeared I just said I'm I'm sold now. <laughs> just like you, I can, you I can lost track. I missed the days of Eminem and the Insane Clown Posse releasing diss tracks. Um, mm. I could kind of keep track back back in those days, but not anymore. You weren't sent uh, an official uh, breakdown of all the, I didn't the get, different... I didn't get the press release mm. so, at that point. Well, I, I mean, in my opinion, Kendrick really set the bar when one of his lyrics towards Drake was certified lover boy, certified pedophile. Mm. You really don't get any That's, any harder than that. Yeah, and they're lucky, I'll tell you what, they're lucky they don't live in, in the United Kingdom because we've got rather stringent uh, libel laws. Um, which I'm, I'm sure, if, if if you can't prove that in the UK, that's 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 a dodgy mm. business. But I'm thinking in America, America, you can say a bit more. You'll appreciate this wordplay because it's almost a, a magazine headline style uh, line. Uh, trying to strike a chord, and it's probably A minor. Come on, that's. Come that's, on, that's, that'd, get, that's that'd get in the mag. That's true. I mean, probably wouldn't get an official Nintendo magazine, but <laughs> I'd get an A mag. <laughs> oh, uh, that's fine. I've any got, juices? I've got a drink review for you. Oh, um, let's do it. This was a belated birthday present from my brother because me and my brother oh. loved horror movies for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never dabbled with this brand um, in the past, but he's given me a limited edition Friday the 13th themed G Fuel. Nice. Um, which could well be, har- I don't usually dabble with the zero sugar stuff either. Um, so it's just going to be pure chemicals. So I've got zero idea what Jason Voorhees tastes like. Mm. But Do we have any preamble on the can? Is it, nothing. Is it made I, I can't actually athletes? find. I can't actually find anything. Distributed by G Fuel. That's, that's mm. about as far as it goes. <laughs> but it's hack and slash flavor, naturally and artificially flavored. Um, which doesn't really make sure. And it's just, I, I'm expecting some kind of red berry to evoke blood. Well, see, I don't even know what color it is. It, it, it's just usual G Fuel uh, blurb on the sides. So you've got game changing energy, focus, mm-hmm. endurance, immunity, and mood. Um, <laughs> all 140 milligrams of caffeine, no calories, no sugar, no artificial colors. So, and apparently, it fuels your gaming, fitness, work, and lifestyle. Um, I've been eating that. The the the, the quart the quart fecta, I believe they call it. I have tasted the Tetris uh oh, okay. ad- edition of this and it was um it tasted like telestatic, so um <laughs> I've I've got, I've got zero hopes for this. So just so it's probably gonna be a one sip and then I'll bit I'll put the rest in the sink. But Okay, let's see. do it, let's so get it cracked. Here's the, here's the open. Nice, standard. And the colour is I'm trying to get the colour. It's clear. Oh, <laughs> so God. that's a bad sign now. It's, it's okay. plasma. I'm sure have a, 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 a large drink of it because that's the only way you can. A large drink yeah. of hack and slash G fuel. Oh, he's, t- he's 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 not vomited over his mic yet. How are we feeling immediately after the drink? There's a mild mm. lemon lime threat to it. Oh, um, okay. And now the aftertaste kicking in. It's just pure chemicals. Um, nice. So yeah, okay. it's it's. It's like it's like a Friday the Thirteenth movie, in that there's a there's a period where you think the victim is safe for a while, and then suddenly, <laughs> bah, like you get you get hit with the with the with the gruesome bit at the end. So That's genius. I, I want them to do a, a Tetris effect uh, drink where after like a couple of sips, you realise it's laced with acid, and you're just <laughs> you're absolutely pinging off your nut. <laughs> um, I don't have a. I just have um a, a monster ultra black mm. uh, this week. Which I don't really love. Um, it's it's okay. It's it, it is like a red berry kind of thing, but it's so tart. Like it makes my my cheeks hurt. But, um, we I, I meant to review this Rockstar Zero uh, Strawberry Lime mm. uh, this week, but I already drank it. So oh well, can't can't live in the past. 
that's it for this week's energy drink podcast we've got a couple of bits of news obviously we're not going to touch the xbox news until we have dringo so we don't say something stupid uh, and, and the, the other thing with that is that awkwardly i was telling you off air off mic because mm-hmm. the kids say a little peek behind the curtains um that my parents are zooming down the motorway towards my house as we speak <laughs> <laughs> because um because I'm working the late shift tonight and my wife's away at work too, so my parents are coming to watch my daughter when I pick her up from school. And in classic parent uh, way, when you say, can you be here after two o'clock because I'm doing a podcast, they leave at quarter to one, so they'll be here like in 20 minutes basically so mm. basically when chris trying turns up i'm probably going to bow out so that because otherwise it's just going to be a massively awkward podcast with me trying not to swear when my parents are sitting <laughs> just off camera so it's probably best for everyone concerned and of course, we have a one Chris policy, so we can exactly. we can have both of you um, on here. And you don't want to see a man like me reduced to tears while talking about Xbox, so it's probably <laughs> for the best. <laughs> oh, crying into your custom controller. <laughs> exactly. um, we've got a couple of bits of Nintendo news, but first, since Chris and I are the only ones here, no one can stop us. Chris, what do you think of Sandman Gate? So for those, oh, is there a gate? Unaware, I, I, I just saw the trailer and was happy enough with it. Is there a gate involved? There is a gate. For those unaware, um, Sandman. Is, uh, whose real name is Hack because I watched the Dark Side of the Ring documentary on him um, is returning to the WWE franchise after being absent since Smackdown vs Raw 2009. Mm. He will be added to the game on the 15th of May alongside the Dudley Boys Sabu and CM fucking Punk um, so pe- they've started releasing entrances mm. for these characters uh, Sandman's entrance I think he looks great Like I think the character model looks fantastic he looks a bit lean but you know um there's two issues here one he doesn't come through the crowd Mm -hmm. which was kind of the if you weren't an ecw fan or haven't seen anything like this sandman was this guy his entire gimmick was he couldn't really wrestle but he was like a bar fighter and he'd come into the ring he'd smash a can of beer over his head so he'd be bleeding already on the way into the ring um the other famous part of his entrance is that he would enter to metallica's enter sandman Mm -hmm. Um, you may be wondering, how did Paul Heyman afford the rights to Metallica's Enter Sandman in the mid-90s? That's the fun part. He didn't. He, did not. he didn't pay for Metallica. He didn't pay for Pearl, Pearl Jam. He didn't play for Nirvana. He just did it. And as such, um, in the appearances of the Sandman in WWE, since then, he's only ever used Enter Sandman once, which was the ECW One Night Stand. And in all recorded versions of that, it's changed to some generic. Like when WCW used to do fake music. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I love the WCW <laughs> fake music. The 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 version of it "Smells Like Teen Spirit," which should be like dan 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 dan. Instead, it's like bam <laughs> um, But people are furious now that in WWE 2K24, the Sandman enters to his WWE theme. And 2K have not paid, presumably, millions for the rights to enter Sandman. Chris, how do you feel about that? I don't care. <laughs> I, saw, I, I, saw, I saw the trailer. I was like, that's good. And the only thing I was like, I thought it's just, it's a shame it doesn't come through the crowd. But as, mm-hmm. as I understand it, nobody comes through the crowd just now in WWE games. Um, which is, uh, you can argue, is a bit of laziness on the developer's part to add that because I'm sure it's happened in the past, I'm sure. They had the Shield it, entrance the Shield for ages. used to do it and Edge used to do it for a while. But to be fair, that was like Attitude, WWF Attitude era where they would literally just show you the the outside of the ring and he would just hop over the, the barrier. You wouldn't actually see him coming through the crowd <laughs> through all the cardboard people. Um, so yeah, that's slightly shame. The, the thing that disappointed me most, and I'm hoping it's just because by default this is turned off and it's all people of all ages are watching the Instagram uh, where, the, where the video was posted, I'd like to see him bleed when he hits yeah. himself with a can. And I'm hoping when you turn the blood on, uh, which isn't on by default, that that just happens during the entrance so that he starts the match bleeding. Um, that's something I'd, I, that's the thing I'm more interested in because I wasn't expecting Enter Sandman. Um, and I was 50-50 on whether he'd come in through the, cr- the crowd. It's the, the bleeding with the can that I want to see. Um, I agree. Yeah. I wonder if that if they wouldn't do that because that would break first blood matches. And they're like, oh, let's <laughs> just not bother so with true. it. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, <laughs> as soon as you get in the ring, ding, 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 that's <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, the people... I know it's slightly different because RVD, uh, Rob Van Dam, for those not aware, his WWE theme is quite iconic, the one of a kind. Mm. But... No one was moaning when they didn't get Pantera's walk for him. Like it's, yeah. I know Sandman's entire thing is basically an entrance, but don't you know anything about Metallica? 
Yeah, like I, there, of, of all the people, of all the music to license, it's very much the the nineties equivalent of Grado not coming out to Madonna. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it, it was like it's even even if I bet if even if they asked Metallica would say no because you screwed us so many times in the past. They're, they're yeah. petty enough to say, "Well, you're not the ones who used Enter Sandman in the past." To chase yourself. Um, so yeah, it would have cost me a few, Just be like, no, that was Todd Gordon. Um, but yeah, like you say, few... it would have cost an absolute fortune, and not everyone's going to buy the DLC. So you probably lose all your DLC profits just putting the music in it. So, yeah. No. <laughs> just wait until Punk doesn't have cult of personality. <laughs> then I'll care. Then I'll be yeah. angry. Um, oh, by the way, any luck? Nah. Single tickets nah. for Clash? No. As soon as I saw it, it, it was like. The, the the best tickets they could find me was like two hundred and eighty quid or something for a single mm. night. I'm like, nah, not if I'm buying three or four. That's I'm not dropping nearly a grand on SmackDown <laughs> with, with the greatest <laughs> respect. It. Um, but yeah, nah, no, yeah. fair enough. I've got I've got one kind of lead that, that's kind of trying to get me tickets, but if that falls through, then I'll just have to watch it in the house. But we'll see. We'll see what we can do. No one else will end up getting a wrestler on this podcast and still not getting on. Well, no one else the way the way two K does it. They'll fly over to press from America to go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to that's oh, well, um. that's that shagged. Anyway, <laughs> story number one. <laughs> Nintendo has given the strongest indication that the next Switch won't be too too far away from existing hardware. Your man Furukawa. This is a big Furukawa. Shunt. The shunt. <laughs> <laughs> this week, um, we all awoke to Furukawa drunk tweeting that they're going to acknowledge the Nintendo Switch in the next financial year. Um, the Nintendo Switch 2, they've been in- acknowledging the Nintendo Switch for some time. Um, there's also going to be a Direct in June where they won't chat about Switch 2. However, when asked uh, on, a, uh, on a call related to these financial earnings, what will it be like, this second console? Is it going to have controllers? Is it going to be entirely motion-based? Is it going to be a- an AI cloud? Uh, Furukawa leaned into the mic and went here uh, switch next model is the appropriate way to describe it mm. so Chris between this and the magnetic joy-con things yeah nicer switch in it sounds that way I'm happy with that the only the, literally, literally I'm just waiting for the backwards compatibility confirmation and then I'll be in two footed studs up on day yeah. one if, to buy eight of them uh, like it's just, it's, it's, I just wonder the confirmation that actually we're going to do what Xbox did. One of the good things Xbox did and carry a library, your entire library over to the next. Oh wait, 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 wait! He's, he, I, can, I can feel he's, he's he's in the room with me. This is Furukawa. The Nintendo Switch Two will not be backwards compatible. Ah, been shunted by the shunt, Shuntaro. How could you do this, this boy? Um, Shuntaru, no, uh, Shun, Shun, Naku, Mara, Shun, Maru, Shuntaru, Shuntaru, <laughs> oh. Furukawa, um, Shuntaru, Shuntaru, Furukawa, you fucking dobo. Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Um, the the I I I'm, I'm yeah, obviously even if it's not backwards compatible, I'm still going to get it. But I'll, I'll be disappointed that I'll have to keep my switch around um, to to play that stuff. I was hoping to pass the switch down to my daughter in, in, a, mm. in a, a kind of family tradition you never um, thought about getting her what what's the age where you get her one of those lights because i had one of those mm. lights for a while they're really nice and they're durable it feels like you could like leather it off something and it wouldn't probably break. just launch it off a wall but um <laughs> it is, i don't know she, she loves she prepares playing on the telly um for yeah. some reason she uh, Good, i don't know if it's because i've got because i've got the oled and the oled's quite heavy for her it's just yeah. quite uncomfortable for her to play, and she prefers using sticks rather than uh, D pad, which is kind of heartbreaking as a as a parent watching. <laughs> um, but I'll, 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 I just go with it, just because I'm happy she's playing at all. Um, but yeah, it, it's like so. I, I think she's more comfortable playing it on TV just now, so whatever. But um, yeah, I've not looked into getting a light, but we'll see. If if this is backwards compatible, then she can just get the OLED and lump it. Um, bye. It, we'll, we'll so, have to so if they're going to oh, if they're going to chat about, it, oh, there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, let's continue. They're, they're, no, they'll let themselves in. It's fine. All right. Okay. Um, they should the, do. That that's that's Furukawa. He's here. He's yeah, got he's, the Nintendo Switch too. I'll go and check. It might not actually be them. <laughs> okay. This is Jordan Midler. I'm here myself. I think that if they're going to talk about this in the next financial year, which lasts to next March. Maybe they do the same thing they did with the Switch, where they get everyone 
uh, together to do like a review in the January. Then they let people play it in like the in New York. It wasn't and... actually them. But... Oh, it's not. It's... Oh my God, is this what I think it is? <laughs> it, was... <laughs> it wasn't the ghost. I'm trying to cover my address here. <laughs> Rather topically. <laughs> <laughs> it's a parcel from the xbox gear shop because i bought a load of xbox t-shirts minutes before they ripped the oh. arse out of half their studios um if you'd only bought more t-shirts then so maybe we wouldn't have to talk about this this one live opening yeah do a, a live, live review of xbox gear. i was i was basically just saying that i think they'll reveal it in january and it will come out kind of spring this is time. actually only part of the orders this is only the socks i believe which is far oh, less Jesus. oh no there's a I was about to say, how big are your fucking feet if that's two just t-shirts, the socks? Two t-shirts. Here we go. Parry your dreams. We've got the... We have the um, Xbox logo Battletoads t-shirt. Okay. Pull the mic closer to you. I think you knocked it. Oh, sorry. It. Um, we have a Battletoads t-shirt. Uh-huh. Um, that's that's nice. It's actually, it's name just, name just, the four. Name the battle toads. What are they called? Uh, Rips, Gap, it's Ration, Bob and Jub. It's Ration Pimple. I think you find there's only mm. three. Um, and uh, then they also have another standard kind of. X- they, they, there's a there's a, a brand they've got now, just which is just the Xbox ball, and then with a design on it to make it look like a different game. So that was a battle toads mm. one. Very subtle. Less subtle is the Halo one. Um, which is basically the Xbox ah. ball with a, wee, a cheeky wee 117 on it. 117. Uh, 117. So there we go. So that's, that's the number of people, that's the number of studios we're going so to close this week, 117. Straight to the charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wear those out and about, and then it's on site, you're going to get battled. Um, yeah, but, but anyway, yes, that's... <laughs> I'll, still, I'll still wear them. I mean, I, I'm obviously not going to be around when the Xbox chat starts, but like... Um, you say that as if you're going to be murdered halfway through the show. I, I won't know, be here, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's really disappointing. Like it's, I, I, I've I've probably mentioned in the past that of of the two consoles, this generation Xbox is the one I kind of lean more towards, just in terms of a a UI thing. Like if, if we get off, and you famously got five hundred Xbox games. Like... Well, exactly. It's, it's it's the whole thing about carrying your library over. Like I I was big on three hundred and sixty, and then moved to Xbox One. So when I moved over, like that's the one I play more because my library is bigger on Xbox because the achievements and stuff. So I just prefer the UI. And I've, I've not like, got any kind of fanboy love for them. I've still got my PS5 and my Switch, obviously, and I love them all like, equally, like they were my own children. Um, but I just prefer the Xbox UI and stuff like smart delivery and stuff. So it, it's really disappointing that this is it, like that. We've spoken in the past about how they constantly shoot themselves in the foot, um, and. It's just, it seems to be this generation is about which of the two companies can make the biggest arse of themselves because they've, they've, they've both done stupid things, but this is the probably, the, well, quite easily, the, the, the daftest of the lot shutting down. Um, like the arcane, and, the arcane one later, hurts, but you can kind of get it because Redfall was a disaster. So it's, it's a shame, but we've seen that happen in the past. The Tango one is just pure madness. Yeah. In a week where this podcast should be laughing at sony for the pc integration <laughs> thing it. it's been completely bumped off the the the, the schedule that's, because of all that's this what stuff. I tweeted. Like, it's like do you remember 400 years ago when people were like this is a bad look for sony this hell divers like yeah. and everyone's just like what <laughs> forget hell divers oh. yeah anyway well we've still got you this is the most chris scullion news of the Sorry, of the generation on. mate i know you're i know you're N- gonna say Cause it, cause Nintendo's it. officially announced Nintendo World Championship NES Edition. The Switch game will be released in July and cost 30 quid. It features 150 speedrunning challenges divided across 13 games. Balloon Fight, Donkey Kong, Excite Bite, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventure, Metroid, Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, Adventure of Link. Chris Gullion, take it away. Well, I'll... I'll, I'll... Because I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to skip the egregious pronunciation of the word bros. But they, I'm, I'm delighted. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted about this because the, the, the trademark was kind of, not the trademark, so the ESRB rated it um, a couple of week, days ago. And people were like, what is this? And some people were like, oh, they're going to re release the official World Championships cartridge from the 90s on Switch Online. And I was like, they won't do that because uh, it would be an early fact that Rad Racer was one of the games of those three things. Mm. I believe Square owned that. Um, but th- th- this <laughs> appears to be like a kind of NES Remix 3 um, type situation, but specifically 
um, although NES Remix was as well, focused on speedrunning. Um, so there'll be basically across these 13 games, there'll be different challenges. So Mario, the examples they gave was getting the mushroom at the start of the game. How quickly can you do it? Um, and there'll be grades of so rank A and A plus and all this kind of stuff for how quickly you can do it. So it's going to be one of those games where you just repeat over and over and over again until you master it frame by frame and get an A plus rating right across the board. And that's going to be extremely satisfying for me to play. It's just, it's also a good one for even if you've got no interest in like retro games or the 8-bit era in particular, it's the sort of game, I saw a lot of people with NES Remix coming out saying it, it helped them appreciate those games more because when you play those games nowadays with no context or anything, a lot of them don't age that great. But when things like this break down specific mechanics and make you play those mechanics enough until you learn the ins, the ins and outs of them, and you, you go actually go, oh, actually, that's that's good now. I, I kind of understand how, that, how they how you kill enemies in balloon fight and now I've learned how to master it and stuff like that. Um, I, I would say anyone who doesn't care about retro should maybe give us a chance as well, because I think it's going to, it might open your eyes a bit to how mm. amazingly designed these games were that you can break down each component of them and turn each one into a challenge. I think it's, I'm really excited about it very much. I love it when they do stuff like this. It's, it's so, it's so un-Nintendo, yeah. but it's also very Nintendo to just randomly be like, we're doing this now. Yeah, like, it's brilliant. And I love the NES remix games, which by all accounts are the same thing. Um, I'm also excited that it's called Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, which implies mm. they're going to do the same with Super Nintendo games, and there was never a, a SNES remix, so I'm hoping that Cody mm. goes that far. What's the, what's the fancy version that I see people are, are flocking so to? So there's two. There's one in the West, which comes with a gold cartridge, which for... for like proper nerds is, is the is the more exciting of the two because basically the Nintendo World Championships were held in the nineties and it was like a US tournament and the finalists were given a grey cartridge with the Nintendo World Championship. Basically the cartridge you, they used for the competition, mm. they just took it out of the machine and said here and then they took it up the road with them. Um and the winners got a gold cartridge and the grey cartridges are worth like fourteen grand nowadays <laughs> and the gold cartridges are worth like 60 70 like name your price basically the gold cartridges so you're getting a replica of a gold cartridge but with nes edition on it so nobody tries to sell it um as a new one and um, whether we stand so you can stand it up in your room some and, and then art cards with the game's box art on on mm. and then in japan you're getting art cards but with the famicom and famicom disc system art and then two famicom switch controllers designed to look like the famicom uh, controllers but those that, that's kind of less exciting because you could always get them in japan if you were a club nintendo yeah. member um and apparently they're going on sale the same day to the public in japan those controllers separately um so i think when i'm in japan i'll pick them up anyway just separately so i'll probably end up buying the uk deluxe set and then just buying the controllers and then job mm. done but it's, it's really exciting as someone who like obviously is a big retro nerd um I, I, I'm always happy when I see these games re-released in like Switch Online and stuff, but I've played them a million times. Um, it's always exciting to see them presented in a different way that kind of makes you play them in a different way, so I'm, I'm, I'm well up for this. Mm. Just finally, before we go for a break and get Chris Dring in here, uh, Media Molecule co-founder founder Mark Healy, who left the studio last year, you might remember, spoke to Ben Hansen on MinMax and said that uh, Media Molecule's next uh, game is more of a game than a creative tool from what he understands about it. Chris, I think this is the move they had to make if they wanted to continue as a studio. The creative tools are amazing, but they weren't paying the bills. Yeah, I'm hoping they go back to a little big planet type situation where um, it's mainly a game. Well, there will be a creative element to it, because he says more of a game than a creative tool, which suggests to me he's not, he's not saying it's a 100% game. It sounds like he's saying there will be creative elements to it, but the game will be will take precedent, as opposed to Dreams, which was ninety five percent crea uh, creation. Yeah, um, it sounds like this will be another little big planet situation where there's a game there first and foremost, and then you can customize and share your all, all your creations after it. Um, which yeah, I agree, I agree that that's the way to go if you want to kind of get the most people involved in it. Because Dreams, as fantastic as Dreams was, it was a very niche product. Um, because not everyone wants to create stuff in their games. Um, it should, if you if you're going to sell the most copies, then the creation aspect should be a a, a part of it rather than the, the whole underlying focus. Um, 
Unless you're Minecraft, in which case, never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, uh, that's the right way to go. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. I wonder if it, if it even is just going to be a little big planet game. Um, I would love that. Yeah. I think it's time. I think they could totally get away with doing, don't call it four or whatever, just call it Little Big Planet. Little like, Big Planet no reason. Universe or something like that. Little yeah. Big Planet Infinity until until the servers shut down. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, um, something like that. I'd, I'd be well up for that. Get Sack back yeah. and Crack Boy all in. For, for a, well, for a we'll start. We'll start the political campaign soon enough. Um, Chris, if you if you are departing us now, do you have any final words? Just be nice to each other. Just mm. <laughs> talking as if it's my final podcast ever. Um, <laughs> all right, just like it, it, it's it's been a oh, it's been a week. Um, and on both sides, like the Sony stuff is pretty toxic. The Microsoft stuff is even more toxic. Um, it's just like obviously people lose their jobs. It's like it's grim beyond belief especially when those people are performing to a level that um just like until recently microsoft was trumpeting them as one of the greatest like modern uh, recent accomplishments they had was hi-fi rush um and then suddenly these people are all getting punted and it's like that's it's just grim so when you go online and see people celebrating it it's just like get a grip like everyone should be at the risk of turning this into a wwe ecw a wcw situation even the most hardcore PlayStation fans should want to see Xbox doing well because... Especially when they're putting Xbox games on PlayStation exactly. now. Like. And especially because if, if Xbox is ever out the... If Microsoft ever says, right, we're done with games, um, this you're doing us more harm than good now. This will be the last Xbox. Let's slowly draw a line under it. Um, even if they do say again, say, right, we're just going to start making games for other systems now and not make any more consoles, that's bad news because... Nintendo's in its a, a kind of world of its own. Sony would essentially have no competition um, in its field, and that's when, if you think Sony drops the ball a lot just now, um, they're going they, 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 with no competition. They basically write the rules at that point, and you, you iPad you two. Better believe it. Uh, let's get the cell the cell architecture back. They'll, they'll add um, uh, copies of Buzz. Uh, and <laughs> hey, Singstar hey. with every Buzz was ahead of its time. It, it was good. I, I never kind of warmed to the mascot, um, but no. but I, I appreciate appreciate the effort. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah there's going to you always want competition because you always want each company to push each other um, to create new things. When there's only one game in town, there's less um, requirement to to kind of push the boundaries, and you don't want that. So nobody should be celebrating what's going on at Xbox just now. First and foremost, because of the job losses, but then in, in a kind of as an overall, overall picture, you don't want to see the industry becoming stagnant if one of the big players leaves and the other one's given free reign to basically write the rules. Um, so yeah, well, hopefully this gets resolved and the remaining studios, Microsoft takes this as a lesson that it can't just keep messing about like this and somebody, whether that's management getting a shake or something, there needs to be a proper... Uh, rethink of how they're doing it because we've spoken in the past about how um they've messed up advertising game pass like so many people still don't know about game pass um the way they're handling their studios is ridiculous the acquisition of activision seemed like a good idea at the time but if it's going to um make every other studio look bad by comparison as one of our kind of opinion pieces on the site yesterday said um that's a bad move in the in the grand scheme of things they, they a lot of um, kind of inward looking has to be done now, and they need to say we need to turn this around because otherwise they're going down a hill here, and they need to kind of hit the brakes. I think. Mm. Okay, doke. We'll be back after this, and we are back. One Chris down, one Chris returns. I have Chris drank from GI dot Biz. How are you, man? I'm I'm doing all right. It's been a busy um, busy week. <laughs> yeah. with, um, uh, when, unusually um, with with everything that's going on in the games industry I was expecting it to be quiet until like that summer games fest sort of period but no here we go never ever stops stuff's happening most importantly though as we were just mentioning Doctor Who's back at the weekend as the biggest Doctor Who man I know how are you feeling about it? I'm pretty excited um, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm a little bit apprehensive I wasn't I didn't love the Christmas special I didn't hate it um, but I, I didn't love it. Um, I did like the, the what David Tennant specials I did. So um, I'm. Um, but also Stephen Moffat's back as a writer, and he's doing. I think he's doing episode three. So mm. not this weekend, it'll be the weekend after because they're doing two episodes this weekend. So I'm quite excited. Yeah. Um, but um, um, 
Uh, we'll see. It's, we'll it's, see. No, it's, it's, it's been Disney'd a bit, isn't it? So um, yeah. we'll find out. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm. I'm a bit, I'm as excited about it now as I was maybe when Matt Smith debuted. That was like my so I I, I like David Tennant. Matt Smith's my favorite ever. Mine, and then I kind of I, I dropped off for a while and then would come back now and again. I find it hard to watch the Peter Capaldi stuff because I'm such a thick of it fan. It's just like that's not you. That's Malcolm Tucker. Like, yeah, that's... He's quite Malcolm Tucker esque. It's quite dark. The Capaldi era. It's like when they try to they try to sort of go up against Game of Thrones in a way. So it's a lot mm. of quite one one series ends with the idea. That when you die, your your ghost feels the pain of your body. So if you're getting cremated, you hear a scream. In one bit, you hear someone screaming, and he goes, "Oh, there's another cremation." I'm like, "This is a kids' show." <laughs> so I was like, "I couldn't." It's a, it's a far cry from the absorbable off. And yeah, exactly, being, like... exactly. But um, yeah, I quite like the Capaldi stuff. There's some amazing episodes in it, but it's, it's super dark. Um, I, I'm a li- my my excitement for it has been the la- the Jodie Whittaker era. Nothing to do with Jodie or, or anything like that, but it was pretty rubbish. So um, yeah. I'm. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for a comeback. Um, we'll see. I like the look of this Doctor and, and everything. So. Oh yeah, Shruti's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Another good Scottish boy. Yeah. Funnily enough, uh, Stephen Moffat went to school with my dad and really? his parents either still do if they're still with us, live two minutes down the road from where, oh. I'm, from where I'm sat right now. Um, Stephen mm. Moffat's wife, um, who produces a lot of shows and stuff, is also on the board of the National Film and Television School and does a lot of stuff in video games. There we are. He's a big Tomb Raider mm. fan, Stephen Moffat. There we are. Get him on the show. Yeah, shall we get him on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kid doke. Okay, let's get into it. Xbox is closing down four Bethesda studios, including Arcane, Austin, Hi-Fi Rush Studio, Tango Gameworks, and two others. Uh, this news broke on tuesday following uh, an internal email this chris came as pretty severe shock to most of the games industry what was your first reaction when this started to break um i, I it was a little sooner than i expected um the financials that xbox put out was it last week relatively recently were not great so um the activision blizzard numbers made it look good but if you just put the factor those out you saw um, Xbox really, really not growing. So game, we know that Game Pass isn't growing significantly. Their console business is down 30%. Um, it, and I look at the games last year and yeah, Forza Motorsport didn't really do anything. Redfall didn't do anything. Hi-Fi Rush was a great game, but it didn't do anything. Starfield seems, I don't, I mean, I don't think Starfield was a disaster, but it certainly didn't perform in the level that I think people were expecting. So it was a rough year and, um, and, I, and, it, and it felt inevitable um, that at some point Xbox is pivoting already. You, we saw uh, the announcement back in um, January, I think, which was quite, it feels like a significant moment when they announced those games were coming to PlayStation and Nintendo. I don't think those were, um, um, I don't think those were the biggest games in the world, obviously, but I still mm. think it felt like a, it felt like a moment. Um, and so, you know, the business was shifting a little bit and that change doesn't tend to be good. Phil Spencer has spoken extensively about the lack of growth in the games industry. Growth is what Microsoft's all about. And, um, and so you felt that there was more to come. They obviously cut a load of Activision Blizzard stuff earlier in the year. Um, but I, I'll be honest, it ha- happened faster than I had anticipated it would. Yeah, I think they were sort of at the start, you know, they're basically at the start of pitching their, you know, working on their next projects. So it probably made sense to close them at this point if they were going to do that. But it still caught me by surprise. I didn't think we were, um, it, it was going to happen that soon after um uh, after the last round of yeah cuts. it's it's weird because now bloomberg reports that arcane austin was uh, pitching an immersive sim obviously they're known for prey they helped on some of like the main arcane leon teams uh, sim stuff and that tango was looking to do another hi-fi rush game so to me it feels the hi-fi rush stuff and tango specifically feels very counter to the entire point of game pass wasn't game pass's entire pitch that games like hi-fi could exist because you're not relying on box sales that's getting left that's getting lifted up by other stuff the game pass dream it's, i'm not gonna say it's over but it, it, it's not when it was originally pitched microsoft's dream for this was to have like every you know hundreds of millions of people transcribe uh, subscribing to a um to a service and that and that, that sheer quantity of people was going to make the whole thing. But, but it kind of it's got to about mm. what thirty million, and it's it's um and it's uh it isn't growing anymore. There is to be fair, Pete, a lot of third party companies were saying this at the time. Like if you how many people how many games do most people play a year, and does it work make sense to subscribe to that many? Um, 
And now it's like, what's going to move the needle for Game Pass? It's big games. Um, then put, pivoting towards um, for the, uh, third party publishing in a way, releasing games on more platforms. And in order to really make the most of that, you need big games. Um, so I, I, it, yes, it, it, I know what you're saying, but I, I do feel that I think kind of they are, they are, I mean, Game Pass isn't quite the be all and end all now for Microsoft because it, it hasn't turned out the way they thought it was going to. They were, they took a, they took a idea that in the future we'd all be subscribing to games, or at least a lot of us would be, and that hasn't come to pass. It's obviously still a lucrative model and it makes loads of money, but, um, and you have to ask, you know, did Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi Rush, if you just look at some of the stuff they did with Game Pass last year with Starfield, where you had the early access thing, right? So they're trying to monetize these games more through Game Pass. Uh, you know, you've got the, you got the mm. microtransactions in games like Sea of Thieves and stuff. Hi-Fi Rush, Redfall, Immersive Sims, these sort of 10, 15 hour games aren't, aren't, are harder to monetize outside of just people who subscribe to it. Also, you look at the charts, there was this idea that Game Pass was boosting sales of of new games and that might be true for a third party publisher who've got games on other platforms but um in the europe for, uh, starfield uh, uh, charted outside of the top 30 uh, forza hi-fi rush and um redfall charted outside of the top 200 like these games didn't make any money as standalone releases really so then they then they're hard to monetize mm-hmm. outside of that some of these games so um you've got this um you've got this situation where Game Pass hasn't turned out to be the dream. Um, uh, it, it has stalled, it's slowed down. I also think my, one of the things I think Microsoft's got an issue with, and it's, is they do this wonderful thing when you, they acquire a company. It's called the limited integration strategy. And what they mean by that is they basically let the company be the company. You do what you like, you know, do, there will be hands off, we'll come in and help you if you need, but you don't even need a Microsoft email address. You can be whatever you want to be. It's how, they, uh, it's how they approach the acquisition of Minecraft and Mojang. And that worked. And it's how they approach LinkedIn. And that worked. Um, but you sort of, when you see, they've had these studios for quite some time and they're not really delivering anything big. <laughs> and I think at some point you sort of go, you know what? We don't need that. What's that Ninja Theory game that no one bought? Yeah. Right? Um, when shortly after they bought it, so you probably have maybe put a bit more effort into getting Hellblade out earlier or, um, do we really need Obsidian doing Pentiment? These games are amazing and obviously glad that they exist. But, um, I think Microsoft needed some bigger games, um, right from the Xbox series S and X and also through Game Pass. And they just haven't had it. And, and, you look at the, you know, you look at these. I, I read the piece on VGC, which talked about um, um, Microsoft's now got these mega titles, and um, that's where, in order to deliver growth, they need more mega titles, and that's kind of true. Um, that doesn't mean they won't make smaller niche t- titles. You know, EA, EA have FIFA, but they still do Dead Space remakes. You know, um, Ubisoft have Assassin's Creed, but they still do a two D Prince of Persia game. You still get these these big companies. They still do sort of these what are called prestige titles. But Microsoft has a lot of studios making it, and they and these games, um, and they, you know, they look at look at the Fallout Four was the best selling game in Europe across um, in April, and you sort of go, everyone's like, they need to be another Fallout, they need to do another Fallout, and this is where they, that, and Microsoft will know that that's where they need to be investing their money, not in an immersive sim. Um, but um, if the numbers were going up, if the industry was doing better, if the if Game Pass subscribers were, were growing, I don't think these studios mm. would have been closed. Microsoft would have been happy to keep them going, you know. Um, but what, hap- what matters now is whether or not for Microsoft, it's all about growing. If these studios are not helping them grow, if they might, if they're not, then then they might want to invest in other areas. It's really uh, depressing. Uh, it's just public companies and capitalism. Uh, it's depressing. What, what shit? So where does this leave the likes of your of your Ninja Theory, of your Double Fine, of these studios that make games that people love, but like? Psychonauts 2 didn't like it set the critics on fire and the fans on fire, but didn't set sales on fire. Hellblade 2, there's a lot of chat about how that game has basically not been marketed at all and is out in about 10 days. Surely the morale there must be absolute rock bottom. Um, so that's a good question because those games do fit into the mold of um uh of the sort of games that you get from uh, Arcane or, or Tango. Um Microsoft don't actually market their games very much anymore. Game Pass is basically their mm. marketing vehicle. The way these, the way this, the way their business works internally is um, uh, game, first party games. They go right. Well, how much money are we going to make out of this game? And if we spend this amount on marketing, how much more money are we going to make? If so many people are getting that game through the subscription service, they're not actually going to make that much money on it. So therefore, you don't get much marketing, um, and that sort of thing. But you know, in, but Game Pass in itself becomes its own marketing vehicle because millions of people get to play it, and then it. You know, it goes up on Twitch and YouTube and, and spreads out through word of mouth. Um, so so in many ways, that is the marketing vehicle for Hellblade. Uh, 
Hellblade has a sort of, it'd be interesting to see what they've done with it because I guess it, it has the power to be have PlayStation-esque sort of game and those games could do really well. Um, and then you have to remember that they bought Ninja Theory for these games and they bought Double Fine for those games. When they bought Bethesda and they spent $7.5 billion on Bethesda, they weren't buying it for The Evil Within and Dishonored. They were buying it for Elder Scrolls. They were buying it for um, Fallout. And they will want those Bethesda teams to be really focused on those IP and Doom and those sort of brands rather than Indiana Jones, rather than necessarily these other things. What, I, what I've always been a bit funny with is I never quite understand why, if that is the aim, like, this is what's alluded to in Matt Booty's email. If the aim is oh, we want to get, we want to put our money onto Fallout and put our focus onto Fallout, could, could they not have, couldn't Tango Gameworks or someone could they work on those titles is it I, microsoft so hands off does that do they do they not even entertain the idea because activision mm. would do it activision would put toys for bob on a crash bandicoot remaster after skylanders because you know they needed someone to do it um i just wondered if you know they've got so much ip now microsoft couldn't you know i bet tanga could do a great tony hawk right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just um, and i just and i um and then and i don't and i'm not sure the developers may not want to work on those things but it's better than closing them surely i i don't I don't know. There's another element of this, which is that these games you mentioned earlier, and I've got a better answer to the question you asked earlier, which is around um, um, these games wasn't at the promise of Game Pass. Yes, but actually a lot of those games they can just sign. You know, they don't need to make them themselves. They can go to a third party. You know, they can go to a um, publisher and developer and go, oh, you've got a game like that. We can sign that and put that into Game Pass. And they can then and then put their money into um uh, whatever Call of Duty or, or Halo or whatever those, and that's the thing. You've got Microsoft lineup of games now. Look at Minecraft and Warcraft and Diablo and and um, those titles yeah. are massive, right? Absolutely massive. And a game like Dishonored Three or whatever, whatever it is they're working on, um, Hi-Fi Rush, they're just it's just a different scale on a completely different scale. But it's it's. I think what's sad about it in a way, what makes me a little cross with Microsoft is that they are kind of responsible for a lot of this. You know, we live in a, I've always been a little bit sympathetic to those companies that overspent during the pandemic because if your competitors are doing it, you're kind of obligated to do it too. So if your competitors are, char- are paying or paying more wages to their staff, you're going to have to do it or your talent might leave and go to that studio. If you're, if you're making a real-time strategy game and your com- competitive real-time strategy game is investing loads of money and making it super triple A, then you're going to have to try and do the same thing to keep up. So that, that creates a situation where people do things out of necessity, not just because not just, not because they want to spend loads of money. But Microsoft didn't do it for that reason. Microsoft wasn't spending billions. They were doing it because they want they believed they wanted to transform the industry and they had this big promise. And the promise isn't paid out. I did a really I did a slightly spicy tweet where I um, said that they're basically American mm. embracer at this point. But there's a sort yeah. of truth to it in that they they spent a lot of money um, in chasing a vision that just didn't come to pass. And now it's the teams that are paying yeah. the price. <clears throat> I wanted to speak to you about basically the timing of this and the fact that we are, as we sit here a month to the day, I believe from them getting on a live stream and talking about what's next and doing the, we hear you, we listen, we love our gamers, our fans in our studios. How, how do they message this? There has been no official word from anyone at Xbox following this. There has been more posts about new controllers than there has been official word about these closures so how do they square that with the we're your friend we're the executive sitting down on the couch having a beer with you yeah <laughs> it's a, a there is a there is a weird challenge i think i think the bafta did it quite well i always think when i went to the, the gdc awards and it became sort of the overarching theme of the event that isn't that wasn't good the bafta sort of came up front and addressed it at the start um I can imagine that the actual, you know, I'm imagining what it might be in person. I suspect you might get Phil Spencer on stage in person, sort of talking about it to the room. I don't know if you'd get that on a live stream. Here's the thing with this um, Xbox stream in, in June. I, I do wonder if, I mean, obviously they always have multi-platform games in it, but I do wonder if mo- this is going to be an Xbox stream where most of the games on it are coming to mm. other platforms. And and it just means that it's such a, I don't know. I, I, I can, I can, there's a lot of noise around it at the minute, this, this, this news, but I do wonder if um, it, it sort of reached into the wider, um, um, wider corners of um, the game. I can't remember what it was like last year because didn't, was it just a, was it a string, stream of trailers? Yeah, it was streams um, of trailers linked with kind of pieces to camera um, last mm. year. But the, surely if their entire, their entire winning back of the hearts and minds has been, we are gamers we are with you 
Fel has like nine million achievement points. Like this can't be ignored, surely. Yeah, it's a difficult. I uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I don't know if it'll be. I I'll be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if they just put it out as a stream of trailers and give it let the creators mm. do the talking. And nobody nobody wants to hear from <laughs> Phil at the minute. <laughs> you know, sort of um, sort of uh, honesty about it. Um, uh, it is a thing. It's interesting because I, I I speak to Phil Spencer uh, down the years many times, and even Lars at Embracer. These two people are some of the most game centric execs I've ever spoken to. Like they're games people. Um, they're not. You know, they really love. They, they talk, I love Strauss Zelnick. He's a very nice man, but I can tell you he's never played a video game. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but whereas you know, you know, Phil does. Phil's put ridiculous amount of hours into Star Trek. I have no idea how he has time. Um, and um, and Lars has like the biggest collection of retro games that you can imagine. He's just really into that. Um, so in a way, it feels you know, as as when you're giving execs kicking, they're, they're the ones you don't want to give a kicking to because they you, they you feel like they're one of us. But um, and but they they're stuck in the that they are still ultimately answerable to shareholders, um, and they're and they're and they're answerable to and those shareholders wanted to see growth and they pitched a big growth strategy and it just hasn't paid off and it, it, it's on them, um, but um, that they didn't work out you know that they over, they over overplayed their hand. Mm. Um, I don't know what my point is. I'm trying to make no. I, I, do, I do get it, yeah. Like I, it's weird because on the one hand, fell. The the like the character of Phil Spencer. Never spoke to the man. Don't know him personally at all. He comes across very personable, but you always have to remember he is this executive, this incredibly rich guy. Like I just feel that the goodwill that they earned from having their top brass being so public uh, out on Twitter, following all these fan accounts, engaging with fan accounts that they should not be engaging with because it includes some of the worst parts of the community. I feel like now that even those people have turned on them, where where do they sit? Yeah. Like, surely that strategy has to be all but abandoned. Well, in a way, if you think about it, part of it's linked to the console war thing, right? It's about that, you know, uh, I love my console, my console is everything. And now with Xbox going, yeah, we're going to stick a load of the games on PlayStation. It's almost, this, it is almost like a middle finger to that group. Um, and they are, you know, resentful and angry about it. Um, unnecessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I um, but, uh, and, um, but, um, uh yeah i that's i, I you know I, can i be honest i think xbox need to stop yeah. talking like they do a lot of talking and they don't do enough delivering they do deliver great games that's you know before someone on twitter shouts at me but um but the uh but uh it's they don't do enough of it for years they've been telling us they're going to change the industry and they're going to they're going to sort out the quality of their games well we're sorting out the quality of our games and forza motorsport is one of the dullest things i've ever played <laughs> right and it's um and um and Red Falls a bit shit, and Starfield was all right. Like, you know, so I'm like, it's, 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 come on, like, get it together. Um, um, stop telling us you're going to do it, and just start doing it. And I, and and I, you know, I believe that's coming. By the way, I look at their lineup, and I think these games look great. Um, and um, I'm really excited to play them. Um, and it might just be a case of now, you know, put your keep, keep your head down and start putting out some some of that stuff that you've been promising you my worry is that <clears throat> now that we've spent years and years and years getting them into this position of the the trickle becomes a stream like we get games the old joke about the dominoes are going to fall and all these games are going to come out it will stop being a joke hopefully by the time we get there if these games aren't firing does xbox just become a label for activision blizzard stuff like well here's the thing actually you know what i <laughs> When, when they went to buy Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard in many ways is actually a bigger and more yeah. powerful games company than Microsoft <laughs> is, and um, and they be- and they get their games out on time. Uh, the quality is not always great, but generally it's pretty good. Um, and um, and you know Microsoft games are often late. Um, and you know you sit there and think, should there should the Microsoft Activision Blizzard's def- um, you know dev management team be the ones <laughs> making sure you know working on some of these microsoft ip that are sort of faltering call of duty remains as strong and as powerful as it did 10 years ago halo is like half the half the monster it once was so you start wondering if you, microsoft should be should be run by the activision blizzard team even though that would be uh terrifying i guess for the employees <laughs> but the um but um um uh but yeah the thing is the fear for microsoft is that games isn't that big a deal for them Right. It isn't really. And they see it as a growth opportunity. They see it as an exciting opportunity for them. But the moment it stops becoming that. I just go, yeah, no, we don't need this. 
Um, that's the biggest um, thing, you know, and they're not afraid to, you know, it's what happened with Nokia and stuff. They're not afraid to suddenly go knock stuff on the head when it's not working. And Xbox, you could argue, hasn't been working. Yes, it's made revenue growth, but it hasn't really been working since the Xbox One came out. Um, and this was their big play. And it isn't it isn't coming out. I hope it isn't. The thing is, Microsoft was always talking about changing the games industry. They're talking about making more games to attract new audiences, um, new ways of paying for these games, new places of playing these games. Like they're always talking about um, trying to change the industry for the better. And I actually believe them when they say that and the plans they have whether you, uh, uh, you're confident in them or not, you know, they were certainly ambitious. Um, and I hope that they're not giving up on that entirely and we're not just going to see Call of Duty, Gears of War, Halo, Diablo, you know, th- Minecraft just on repeat for the next decade. Um, you know, I look at their lineup now and it's cool and it's exciting. I just hope that the next games that they commission in Greenlight are going to have a similar a similar sort of slate. <clears throat> okay, before we get out of here, any any final thoughts on this? Um, I'm really, and it's very disheartening. It's been a disheartening week, a disheartening year, a disheartening three years in this industry. Yeah, it is. It is. Here's the thing. I will say this. Um, since obviously on games and shoppers, we write a lot about what's going on in the market. And the first two months of the year, I didn't don't think we wrote a positive mm. story. Um, when GDC started to kick in, we started writing more about studios opening, new new investment happening, new funds starting up. It wasn't quite, it's not the heyday, but we were, there were some positive stories amongst the layoffs. And that's still happening now. We're still reporting on studios setting up. I think there's a story breaking quite soon about another AAA studio setting up by another group of people that's, that's doing, that's quite exciting. Um, they're still happening. Um, if you look at the sales that's happening in video games, Console market is in collapse, so if you console hardware <clears throat> sales are doing really, really down. But game sales are surprisingly mm. robust. You know, in a, in a quarter where there wasn't Hogwarts, Hell Divers Two, Power World, um, was it Balacia, whatever that um, that card game is, we're seeing hits. Bellatro, VGC's um, game of the year. <laughs> yeah, well, so yeah, that's that's what I'm trying. I've not played oh, mate, it. As um, soon as you um, play it, your um, life will be over. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I'm so I'm so there's a re- that's what people told me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but it, there's there's been like successes, quite a few successes um, in the games industry. New IP gamers are spending money and they're buying games. The market is broadly up. Um, you know, we're in this real doldrum. There's not a lot coming out. Um, it looks like Switch Two's next year and GTA Six is next year, and it's like a lot of the big games are a little far further out. But um, the market hadn't collapsed like we thought it was going to at the start of the year. There is some positive stories out there. Some studios are starting up. Some investment is happening in games. that wasn't happening in January and February. It's happening now. So we're still going to see more of these stories. We're still going to see cuts and depressing stories out in the games industry. But there's some positive ones out there as well. And I'm, I'm more confident than I, had, than I was two months ago that we will start <clears> to see a turnaround <throat> in the next six months. Um, yeah. I- there we are. I end on a positive. <laughs> I, I believe I recently spoke to the people that you were alluding to, and it is, a, is, is a, it is exciting. There are still glimmers out there of stuff happening. It's not the heyday of in twenty twenty when you could sneeze and you could no. get like if you were like an art director at Riot, you could get five billion for a new studio. But yeah, yeah, we're not we're not we're not in that world. Companies are having to work harder. There's a lot of studios that um, are struggling for investment. Like I, I don't want to. I don't want to downplay how hard it still is out there it's just that it, this isn't an industry in yeah. collapse <clears throat> it's just it's going for an extremely painful cut. look the games industry has always done this it's always gone bigger it's always boomed a little bit too far and it had to contract a little bit it's done that throughout the entire history of it it's just that in this situation the growth was so extreme the decline is, is equally as, as extreme um and um and it's painful and horrible and people are losing their jobs and it's just awful but it will bounce back that's a nice note to end on. Um, as as we currently record, it has just turned two o'clock, so I checked Twitter to see if that Sony showcase has been announced yet, but not yet. I'm sure we'll be talking about that sh- oh. sooner rather than later. You heading out to SGF, Chris? Excellent. I am. We'll be there. Yeah, I am. I am. I, I'm, yeah, I, I hear you're yeah. going to be out there. Um, it's um, I'm uh, uh, GI is doing a bunch of stuff. We actually doing a panel at IGN Live. Ooh, okay. could, you, um, could you get, is, could you get uh, me in? Is, you know something that could... Isn't it? I pro- yeah yeah I think so. <laughs> um, and the uh, but um, but yeah, I'm, uh, there's a lot of um, I'm looking forward to it. I I, I went last yeah. year and it was great. It's really great. It's not E3. It's not nowhere near that. No Kenshia Hall. No fun. weird controllers. 
No, and no, the thing is with E3 is it's so, such a Hollywood thing, right? You know, you know, Keanu Reeves, no, uh, it's not that. It's it's a bunch of games in a in a in a yeah. back alley. Well, <laughs> and I'm not I've, even joking. I've been invited to see Slash perform while I'm out there, so there's still a bit of that that oh, glass and glam. <laughs> oh wow, what's that? Why have I not been invited to see Slash? That's Mate, what I'm it, from the BBC <laughs> time, I'm on some weird press lists. I just get. I, oh, wow. I got invited to the uh, convention of the National Rifle Association, so uh, oh, it's uh, it's all going. Um, but... well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'll see, I'll see you there if you happen to be at the uh, NRA convention, and, and I'll see you at the, see the NRA convention. <laughs> you yeah. can send any questions, comments, or concerns to podcast at videogameschronicle.com Thank you for listening. You can follow us on Twitter at jordan midler for me and you can follow chris at what's your uh at chris underscore drawing i thought it was that but i thought i would double check and in, in case i sent someone to something horrific which is all twitter is these days the worst accounts the worst videos i've, I've changed my twitter account now i only ever see um either uh, i've got two columns on my uh, and it's like i can see people who mm. added me and I can see my direct messages, and I can't see any. I don't. I don't. Any, anyone? I don't want. I don't want anyone else's opinions anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't. Um, I don't want it. Um, and um, I also uh, it's off my phone, so I only even mm. see it at work. So um, because it, it starts to creep into your personal life, it completely. Well, it's when I sort of put out a video later on of that clip of you saying that Xbox should start making some fucking games and stop talking, um, I'm sure you'll have plenty <laughs> of ads. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you to Grant Kirkhope for the VGC podcast theme. We will see you next week. Say goodbye, Chris. Goodbye. Goodbye for Chris Scullion, who is no longer with us, God but not forgotten. And we'll see you next time.